I welcome you back to the class. In today's class, we'll be talking about the applications of the concept of friction, how friction is used in performing the work, and what applications does this friction suffice us as far as the mechanical systems or the engineering world is concerned. So the first application for today will be the first application that we'll be going through today about these about the concept of friction is what is known as a screw jack. So first of all, the first application that we'll be taking up for the, for the day is in, in the form of a screw jack. In front of you is the screw jack. As far as a screw jack is concerned, screw jack is a device which is used for lifting load. So the primary function of a screw jack is to lift the load. You often hear of this jack when the tire puncture of the car happens. So you often think of, or you often find yourselves in need of uh, getting a jack, okay? So from that very concept, it's quite easy to understand that we do use this jack and the primary function of this jack is to lift the load. If you look at the, load, if you look at the diagram of the, of the slip screw jack. Screw jack is known as a screw jack because it has a screw. Okay, so it has a screw, a, I will say a series of screws, which are whose primary function is to lift the load. Sometimes these screws are also known as the power screws. They are also known as the power screws. Because on account of these threads, on account of these threads, they have the tendency of lifting the load, right? This screw jack is composed of a screw. So in a screw jack, you have a screw and wound around the screw is a nut. Okay, the function of the nut is to support the load that the screw withstands. So screw carries the load and the support is provided by this nut, fine. Now attached with the screw is a lever, fine. What we do, we turn the lever, we turn the lever. So as we turn the lever, what happens? The screw jack comes up or the screw jack comes down. So on the top of the screw jack, you will find that there will be the load. So load will be on the top. So load will be on the top of the screw jack. Fine. And the load will be carried not by the entire screw itself, but by it, by the threads of the screw and only by those threads of the screw, which will be in contact with the nut at that very time. Fine. Because if you have a load right now on the screw, there'll be no load carried by this portion. There'll be no load carried by this portion, but only this portion that is covered by the nut will be responsible for holding the load. Yes. Number one and number two is very important. If you look at the distance from this point of the thread, fine, to this point of the thread, this is known as a pitch. This is known as a pitch. And in fact, pitch is the distance traversed by or translated by the screw when the screw is rotated by one complete revolution. So when you rotate a screw by one complete revolution, either the screw will come up or it will come down. But the MM, it moves up or it moves down when it's rotated by one complete re revolution, you call that as pitch. So pitch is very important, okay? So we have to do the mechanical analysis of this type of the screw jack. So for us, we have a screw jack composed of a nut, composed of a screw, having a lever arm, and on the nut will be the load. And we said that the load will be carried by what? The load will be carried by what portion of the thread? Yes, yeah, that, that is in contact with, yes, yes. If I ask you that the screw jack fails, the screw jack fails, the screw jack can fail when this portion of the nut, or sorry, this portion of the screw, this portion of the screw, this portion of the screw fails, okay? If it breaks, then the entire load will fall down. So we can at least say that the entire load is carried by what? The threads. So threads are very, very important. Most often the threads that we use, if you look at the, 
shape of these threads, they happen to be in the form of their square. Okay, if you look at the cross sections, if you take the cross section of this thread, it will be the square. So we say this is a square cross section threads. Square cross section threads are often used as far as the screw jacks are concerned. Now, before we go ahead in doing the analysis of the screw jack, let's return back to the basic diagram of the screw jack. From here, it's quite clear that in case of a screw jack, we have a square threaded screw. We have a nut, the nut is supported on the ground. We have the handle and above the nut, sorry, above the screw, there will be the load. And this is the top view of this screw jack. So this is the front view and this is the top view of the screw jack. This is how the screw jack essentially looks like. Now we can, we can all, at least also say out here that in order to turn the screw jack, we have to apply some force, okay? So when we apply some force, that force will essentially be applied in this direction, okay? So if this is your x-axis, if this is your y-axis, then the load is to be applied along z-axis, okay? For this system to rotate, okay? So this is how the system looks like when we see. Now look at the representation of the screw. This is something very important. When you talk about a screw, here we have taken a shot from your, your textbook. On the left-hand side is your screw and nut assembly, fine. You have a screw inside a nut. Two points have been selected, which are at a distance L apart. That is, this is their pitch, fine. The screw, if you look at this pitch portion, the portion that has been enclosed by the pitch is essentially like this. Okay, this is the shape. This is how this pitch portion essentially looks like. Okay, now this is the portion. If this much is only the portion of the screw that is in contact with the nut, then it is this entire circular, This is, it is this entire helical portion of this screw, which is actually carrying the load. Are you getting me or not? Now let's do one thing. Let's open it up. Let's open it up. Open it up means let's, yeah, let's take this point A in one hand and point B in one hand and stretch. Okay. So as you stretch the two points, you will essentially get a wedge shaped portion like this. It is being said in the books, it's a triangular portion. It's not a triangular portion. It's a wedge. But in the front view, it will essentially look like a triangle. Right. Now, if you look at the entire entire, if you look at the length of this base of this triangle, this was what? This was actually the circumference of your, yes, it was actually the circumference of your, yes, it was the circumference of this screw. So, okay, that will be 2 pi r, that's equal to pi into b, fine. And how much is the distance from in between two ends? That's equal to, that's, that's what you call as l, fine, that's written over here, okay, which you also call as pitch. Okay, and at this point, it's having some angle that's called angle of helix, which is represented by alpha. Okay, so we have a wedge. The angle of the wedge is alpha. The base of the wedge is pi into d and the perpendicular side of the wedge is how much? Equal to the pitch. It's written equal to five. We'll prove it how it's equal to five. So this triangular representation is very, very important. This wedge representation is very, very important. That's why in some of the books on mechanics, while talking about the friction, friction, the applications of the friction, they first of all talk about the wedge, then they go to the screw jack. Anyways, it will not do too much of botheration to us. So we can at least say that as far as a screw jack is concerned, the representation of a screw jack, which carries the load is in the form of a wedge. So wedge carries the load. In other words, we can say, okay, number one. Number two is, look, if you have this nut going up or this nut going down, if you have the weight acting on this nut, fine, okay. If you have some weight acting going on this nut, which we have to actually lift. So entire weight of the nut will be on this wedge portion that we have taken out, okay. So if you are moving the nut up, what is happening to the weight? The weight is going upwards, but the contact of the weight is on the is say for example this is a weight 
So as you are turning this nut and the weight is going up, it means this weight is initially here, then it's going here, then here, then here, then here. So it is traversing the upper side of this wedge as the weight is moving up. If the weight is moving down, then what happens? We can assume that it is the weight which is moving down this wedge. Fine. Though the weight will not be concentrated, it will be, it will be distributed over the entire top face of this wedge. So it means as the weight is going up, the weight is actually translating or traversing across the top side of this wedge. Fine. So we can say, we can make a model out here. So we say that the working of a screw jack, jack is equivalent to the working or to the motion of a mass M from the bottom of this wedge to the top of this wedge like this. Okay, this is the this we call as a modeling of this weight lifting by the screw jack. I, I will repeat it out here. Please give some thought to it because your load will be carried out by the screw by this nut. So as the nut is moving up, your load is moving up. Fine. So it means if you look the contact between the nut and the screw, that is in the form of this uh, what you call as a wedge. That's on the wedge. In fact, on the top surface of the wedge. So as the weight is moving up. It's actually one point of, it's actually, uh, the, 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 there's a transformation or so there is a, what we say, the movement from one point of the wedge to another point of the wedge. So it means as the mass is going up, as the weight is going up, we're actually traversing some distance across the face of this wedge. So we are showing it the entire mass that is being lifted by in the form of a block. And we say this block is being lifted on the triangle. Okay, so this is the first model that was given to explain the working of the screw jack. Okay, let's move forward and see how the model goes. The model so is essentially so we'll be having some mass, and that mass will be going up the inclined plane. Okay. So that's what our entire analysis will now be based on. So let us do the analysis of the screw jack. Essentially, we will say now that we have a wedge, a triangular wedge. Over which we are trying to move we are trying to lift the mass. This angle is the angle of helix alpha. This distance for us is equal pi into D. What is D? D is the mean diameter of the screw, pi D. And this portion is our pitch. This portion is our pitch. We write this by P. Let's make some assumptions. Let's do some assumptions first. Let's do the assumptions. Let, let W is equal load placed load placed on the screw head. Let W be equal to the load placed on the screw head. Okay. Let P be equal the effort. Effort applied at the end of the handle at the end of the handle, let L equal length of the handle. Let D be equal mean diameter of the screw. Why are we saying it's a mean diameter? 
let d be the mean diameter of the screw let alpha let alpha be the angle of screw let alpha be the angle of screw let phi be equal to the angle of friction what is angle of friction you also call this as angle of repose what's angle of repose the smallest angle above which the block slides from an inclined plane okay and let also mu be the coefficient of friction mu be the coefficient of friction mu be the coefficient of friction between screw and the nut let mu be the coefficient of friction between the screw and nut let mu be the coefficient of friction between the screw and the nut so essentially we are placing a block of some mass over this inclined plane and we are saying its mass is or its weight is w its weight is w fine okay we are also stating about the coefficient of friction if the block is going up the coefficient of friction has to be in this direction what we call this coefficient of friction as mu times the normal reaction okay let me isolate it somehow let's write this as this is f is equal mu times the coefficient mu times the normal reaction okay we will also be having the weight will also be having the weight will also be having the weight in the downward direction okay the normal reaction and in this direction there is no possibility of tipping no possibility of tipping because because we are having the load inside the nut so it cannot tip like this it's fixed okay yeah so this coordinates let's again uh, take this to be our one of the axes we'll slightly draw it back and this is our another axis let's take this to be our positive x axis okay as i have stated this is positive x and let's take one more x as a okay okay let's take this to be our positive y axis okay it doesn't matter fine so if you look at this w this angle is 90 degree this angle will be 90 minus alpha fine this angle and this angle is vertically opposite angle this angle will also be 90 minus alpha this angle is 90 therefore this angle this total angle will be alpha this angle has to be alpha now you have two components w one component of w will be in this direction that will be w cos of alpha and another component will be w sin of alpha so let's write the equations of equilibrium fine so as we write the equations of equilibrium do one thing one important I, i should not deviate from the earlier statements which i said that you are free enough to change to take your coordinate system but we often prefer the direction of motion to be our positive x system okay because we are fond of doing it we have done it many a times so it does not uh, give us a both ratio okay so first of all we'll be having uh, summation of all the components along x axis will be minus w sin alpha minus f minus f and 
we will be having the component along any component along positive x is there any component yes yeah there is one important thing that we have to do initially if you look at your previous diagram your screw was a helical one fine let me uh, return first to the diagram if you look at this diagram your load is acting in this direction sorry not load this is the effort let's suppose p is the effort that we are trying to apply okay that we are trying to or let me write it as p p p is the uh, let's write this as f because we will not confuse p with the pitch f is the force with which we are rotating the handle force that we are applying at one end of the hand that force is getting converted into a moment or a torque because essentially the motion that we are getting is a rotational motion fine so so this force that we are applying at the handle somehow gets transmitted to the internal portion where the load lifting actually happens okay so if you look at that load the load is actually moving let me take the previous slide first if you look at the previous slide this one if you look here the load you applied the load on the handle in this direction fine so the load was acting on the handle in this direction when you open it up in this direction the direction of the load will now be in this direction the load will be in this direction the i mean to say not the load but the direction of the force which is actually lifting your load up so initially this is the force f that you applied at the handle but that force got transmitted to the inside of the screw where the load lifting actually took took place so you had some mass which was actually sliding above it are you getting me or not so as this mass is sliding above it is being subjected to a force in this direction as you open it up the direction of that force will be if you show it on the triangle it will be in this direction we call that as p prime we will not say that's equal to f okay we will not say that's equal to f there's a reason for it we will just explain but only a portion of that f will be in this direction because it is a combination of translation and rotation okay so that p prime we show in this direction and it is this force which is actually moving our mass in the upward direction so as we return we have to show the force because of that is actually lifting our load up and we show that that load is in this direction let's call this load as p prime let's call this load as i'm i'm confusing you this is not load this is force let's call it as p prime now this angle will be this angle will be 90 minus alpha this angle will be 90 minus alpha so the component of p component of this p in this direction this is 90 minus alpha this is also alpha by the way its component along x axis will be p dash cos of alpha and it will have a component along negative y axis that will be p dash sin of alpha okay so when you write the equation of equilibrium you have to write here plus p dash cos of alpha is equal zero or you can write p dash cos of alpha is equal w sin alpha plus f call this as equation one sum up all the forces along y axis so first of all you will be having the component that is uh, uh, the components when you sum up all the components along the y axis first of all you will be having minus w okay you will be having minus w cos alpha minus w cos alpha minus p prime sin alpha plus normal reaction is equal to zero which implies the normal reaction is equal w cos alpha plus p prime sin of alpha call this as equation number two so we are done we have found equation one and equation two okay but we know what is f equal f is equal to coefficient of friction times the normal reaction call this as equation third now substitute the value of substitute the value of 
substitute the value of f in equation one. That is from equation one and equation three. From equation one and equation three, what we will obtain? From equation one and equation three, we will obtain. First of all, I will write this f. F is equal to mu times the normal reaction n. In instead of n, we will write w cos alpha plus p prime sine of alpha plus w sine of alpha is equal p prime cos of alpha. Okay. Now, as far as this coefficient of friction is concerned, mu coefficient of friction is written as tan of angle of repose. This is from the definition of the coefficient of friction. That's equal sine phi by cos phi. So instead of this mu, let's write sine phi by cos phi. So as we write sine phi by cos phi, what will be in, inside of it? So we'll write here, we'll not write mu now, we'll write sine of phi by cos of phi. So that will give us W cos alpha sine phi cos alpha plus P prime sine phi sine alpha plus W sine alpha cos phi is equal P prime cos alpha cos of phi. So we can write, we can take these W terms together. This will be W sine alpha cos phi plus sine phi cos of alpha is equal P prime we will take out cos alpha into cos of phi by minus minus sine phi sine of alpha. Okay, that is W into that is sine A cos B plus sine B cos A that is sine of A plus B that is sine of alpha plus phi is equal P prime. This is cos A cos B minus sine A sine B that is cos of A plus B that is alpha plus phi. So we can write P prime is equal W sine of alpha plus phi divided by cos of alpha plus phi. So what that will be equal? So what that will be equal? Yes. So we will write P prime. Oh, P prime is equal W tan of alpha plus phi. Phi. Okay. Okay. So if you return back the top view of your screw jack. This was the top view of your screw jack. This is how it was looking. So at this point, you are applying force to move it. Let that force be F. Okay. Let that force be F or let that force be P. W is the way to be lifted, okay? When you write pitch, write it with small p, okay? This is the diameter of your, this is the diameter of your nut. Inside this nut, we are having a screw, okay? And we say the mean diameter of our screw is say, for example, small d. The mean diameter of our screw is small d therefore this distance will be d by 
two. So what is this P trying to do over the length L? It's creating the moment. The same moment is being created inside the screw, but inside the screw, there are internal forces and the force that we had stated right now, we call that as P prime. Okay. So what is the moment because of P that is P into L has to be equal to the moment created inside that is P prime D by two. Okay. So we can write P prime is equal to P L divided by D. Therefore, instead of this P prime, we will write 2PL divided by D is equal to W tan of alpha plus phi. Therefore, we can write the P. What's P? The force required to lift the weight W is equal to W times D divided by 2L into tan alpha. This is called the effort required. This is the effort required to lift the load. How much force you have to, how much force you have to apply at a distance L to lift the weight W that's given by WD divided by 2L. Yeah, WD divided by 2L into tan of alpha plus phi. If I ask you how much is the torque required? How much is the torque required? That's equal P into L. That will be equal to how much? WD divided by two into 10 of alpha plus five. This is the torque required, the minimum torque required to lift the load. Okay. So we can also play with these equations very quickly. So we can write now the force required is equal WD divided by two L into tan of alpha plus phi. We know this is tan of A plus B. That's equal WD divided by 2L into tan of A plus tan of B divided by one minus tan A tan B. That's equal WD divided by 2L. If you look at your triangle, this is your pitch. Okay. This is pi D. This was alpha. Tan alpha will be P by pi D. Small p. Pitch by pi D. Plus tan alpha. Uh, sorry, tan phi. That's equal to coefficient of friction. Divided by 1 minus P by pi D into mu, okay? That comes out equal WD by 2L into P plus mu times pi D divided by pi D minus, this is pitch small p, minus pitch times the coefficient of friction. This is the, the effort required to lift the load. When you are given the coefficient of friction, you are given D, you are given pitch, okay? So you are given the load to be applied, you are given the length, so you can calculate how much is the force required to lift it up. How much will be the torque required? WD by two into P plus mu pi D divided by pi D minus small p into U. Okay, if coefficient of friction is equal to zero, then how much P is required? WD divided by 2L into pitch divided by pi into D. D and D will cancel. That will be equal W into pitch divided by two times pi. This much force will be required if your coefficient of friction is zero. But is that possible then? No. Okay. So this is the torque. This is the force that you require to lift it. How much is the force that you require to lower the load? How much force? Sorry? Same. But in? You are wrong. Its value will be different. 
I think you require less load to lower, more lo more force to lift. Now the question is how to calculate how much is the force required to lower the load that we shall be doing in the Friday class. Thank you.